Here is Parper rule number six. Interproximal reduction, or IPR, is the removal of enamel between teeth's interproximal contacts. It is an awful lot useful for creating the space we need to solve misalignments. As we remove the interproximal enamel with an instrument, we can, in fact, create small diastemas between the teeth that will be filled back up again while teeth align, but you have to do it the right way. But wait a moment. I mean, what are we talking about? This is crazy. We're removing enamel with a very invasive instrument. We're just gonna probably ruin the teeth. Well, I know it can seem a little invasive, but keep in mind this. Interproximal reduction does not, I repeat, does not ruin the teeth, nor it increases the risk of caries of periodontal disease nor anything else. It is safe. As long as, as long as, it's done properly. And by properly, I mean we should just beware of recreating smooth regular surfaces on the interproximal contacts. You can use a diamond strip to properly smoothen surfaces after you do the bulk of the IPR with other more invasive instruments. These are the four main instruments we can use to make IPR. Interproximal strips, bursts, discs, and automated stripes, like the one in the lower right corner. They are all excellent instruments as long as you use them carefully. You should, in fact, make no more than 0.5 mm of IPR for interproximal contact. Even though this is a conservative limit, that can be carefully exceeded if you need it. Now, let's take an example. When facing lower crowding, just like in this case, you can decide to remove some interproximal enamel to get those teeth straight. The exact amount of IPR you have to make is calculated by the software and it is shown in tenths of a millimeter. Here, for example, we should remove 0.2 millimeters of enamel from these four interproximal contacts on the lower incisors. This means you need to remove 0.1 millimeters of enamel from the mesial surface of a tooth and 0.1 millimeters from the distal surface of the contiguous tooth. You can see how you will need to perform the IPR at different stages of the treatment to maximize its efficacy. In the video, when the IPR rectangles are white, it means IPR hasn't still been performed. When they become gray, it means that is the stage at which IPR needs to be performed. The staging you will have to follow is gonna be all precisely written down in your treatment overview when the aligners arrive at your office. But you can also find it in the clean check. It will say you how much IPR you need to make, where you need to make it, and when you need to make it. Now, in this case, I just followed the instructions and performed the IPR when suggested by the software. I should have expected a perfect result, but let's see what happened. At the end of the treatment, a space remains between those two central incisors. Gosh, there is just one reasonable explanation. I have done too much interproximal reduction. But of course, I don't tell the patient I've scratched the teeth so much, now there's a space in between them. I just diplomatically assess that these teeth just need a little bit more movement. At this point, 
we just take new impressions and start the refinement to close the space. Now, of course, we don't need any more IPR here because we already have an excess of space. The software will just automatically retract those teeth until that space is closed. You can also place some attachment on those incisors to make sure the teeth follow the aligner well. But you can't really risk any more complications at this point, so you'll just make sure to use a little trick, a very useful trick, that is called virtual powertrain overcorrection. You ask in the comments to add three virtual powertrain overcorrection aligners as final aligners. These aligners will just overcorrect its retraction, which is amazing to close any remaining spaces you didn't expect. Well, maybe if I had used this tool right from the beginning, this residual space wouldn't have showed up at the end of the first aligner sequence. In fact, it's amazingly useful unless you like doing refinements on all of your patients to program those power chain overcorrection aligners in every patient. This is because almost every patient will need some interproximal reduction at some stage, and if you make a little too much of it, those aligners will automatically close that small residual space.